Welcome to another episode of Science Uncovered, where this week we are investigating whether it is possible to spot a fake smile. This one I think is fake and this one I think is real. So I think this is the real one and this is the fake one. Okay, I think this one is fake and I think this one is real. I think this one is the real one and this one is the fake one. So when a smile is fake, the brain tells the zygomaticus major muscles in the cheeks to contract, which pulls the corners of the mouth outwards. But in a genuine smile, signals of happiness are processed unconsciously in parts of the brain that deal with emotion. This not only causes the muscles in the cheek to contract, but also the orbicularis oculi and the pars orbitalis muscles to contract, which causes a creasing around the eyes, the eyebrows to dip slightly, and the cheeks are more raised. But why are we so bad at spotting fake smiles when the clues are actually there? Well, probably because those cues are so very subtle, it just amounts to uh, an increase in the crow's feet around your eyes, and people are not very good at picking that up. Hello and welcome to Science and Covered. This week we'll be exploring the greatest plague of the 21st century. Yep, we are talking zombies. Firstly, what is the definition of a zombie? Well, the traditional idea of a zombie is a corpse brought back to life through the powers of voodoo snake rituals, spiritual influences, or, in the 21st century, a virus. My name is Dr Austin. I am a theoretical zombiologist at the University of Glasgow and head of the Zombie Institute for Theoretical Studies. So what is a zombie? Uh, well, for us, there are two different types of zombies. The fictional one, the one that you see in films and horror movies, uh, sort of crawling out of the ground, rising from the dead, eating people's brains. So that's the fictional idea, and I'm interested in the real science of zombies. So which of these attributes that they have in film and TV would we would actually happen if they existed in real life. So that's what my research is all about. I'm not too sure how fireworks work. Gunpowder, I reckon. And a fuse, a little fuse. I think that they um, just cause a, a, a big chemical explosion on a small scale. And then you light the fuse and it ignites the gunpowder and it's all in like a thing. Maybe there's a bit of wood so it pushes it out, pushes the stuff into the sky. Fireworks work through combustion. So you have the tube and you've got the gunpowder inside. I think it's gunpowder. Fireworks are composed of an outer shell, an explosive, which is gunpowder, and a fuse. The fuse is lit, which ignites a small compartment of gunpowder in the bottom of the firework and propels it into the sky. So I'm here in the chemistry lab today and I've got some chemicals here that are sometimes used in fireworks. So let's take a look and see how they burn. So first of all, I'm going to turn the Bunsen burner to the hot flame. And I'm going to take some lithium. Just put it in the flame and it should turn red. There you go. I'm here today to try to explain the scientific facts behind fracking and the potential problems and alternatives to the process. Well, the process of fracking is to release um, gas which is tightly locked into um, shales deep below uh, the surface. Hydraulic fracturing is the process of drilling a well vertically into the ground and slowly making this well horizontal as it reaches the shale rock. After this, the well is cased using cement. Once this process has been completed, explosive charges triggered by electrical current are used to perforate holes along the shale formation to allow the gas to flow. After this, a mixture of water, sand and chemicals are pumped under high pressure underground to open up fractures as well as to create new ones. Chorophobia is actually the fear of dancing, where choro comes from choreography. 
Here is Andy Field, a professor of psychology who specialises in fear and anxiety, to tell us a bit more about phobias and where they come from. The American Psychiatric Association, their criteria for a phobia is it has to be an unreasonable fear. So uh, being scared of a gun being pointed at you is not an unreasonable fear, but being scared of dancing might be considered an unreasonable fear. I mean, cause, uh, I guess it's because all the attention is on you. I think that's quite scary for a lot of people who maybe have self confidence issues. Um, I would say that's probably one reason why people are scared of dancing. Uh, you might get an injury, they could fall over. Because they're shy. Because they don't want to fall over and <laughs> look really stupid. <laughs> Blood is made up of red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets and plasma. Your blood type is identified by two things. Firstly, by antigens, which are present on the surface of the red blood cells. And secondly, by the antibodies that are found in the plasma. If you're blood group A, then you will have the A antigens on your red blood cells. Blood group B has the B antigens. AB has A and B antigens, hence its name, and blood type O has neither. I'm not quite sure about that. Um, but I, th I thought it was uh, some proteins on the top of the red blood cells. <laughs> um, I forgot what I learned in biology. <laughs> This is the first ever Science Uncovered live show. Hello and welcome to Battle of the Brains, a very special quiz all about science. Welcome back. So we're going to do a little experiment on brain freeze. You might be wondering why I've got a lab coat on, just health and safety and all that, you know. syndrome is a neurological disorder that affects movement. It's defined as having a limb that performs meaningful acts on its own. Rather, the sufferer feels that they have no conscious control over what that limb is doing. We give gifts to others not to increase our reproductive success, but because we have evolutionarily selected for a nature that initiates altruistic acts in the hope that they will be reciprocated. <laughs> 